everybody! Thanks for joining me. My name is Yoon. This week, my vocal tip is don't open your mouth so much when you sing. I don't know if some of you remember or recall or even presently have a choral director or teacher possibly saying, open your mouth when you sing. Now this is my personal opinion and also through experience that when you open your mouth too much, this is what happens. You drop your jaw and then this thing here that's called your tongue, well, it goes back and goes back and blocks off your air. And when it blocks off your air, you can't produce any sound. Why do they say open your mouth? Well, because they think that if you do open your mouth, you will get more sound because obviously if the space is larger, then more sound is able to travel out. Is that correct? Sure, I guess I should ask a science guy to find out. So for example, when you do sing and you start to open your mouth more, what ends up happening is that you do drop your jaw and the tongue goes back and then you block off your air and then all of a sudden it gets a lot harder to sing things that you want to sing. For instance, especially when you want to sing higher notes, people tend to drop their jaw more and that causes a chain reaction. Drop the jaw, suck the tongue back, block off the air. And that's why it gets hard and that's why you feel like you're straining and shoving and pushing all of that sound out, or at least trying to. If you try to sing without opening your mouth so much and not using your dropping your jaw, if a sound would be different. Let's try something. I'm going to sing a little passage where I'm actually going to purposely drop my jaw and open my mouth wide. I'm going to sing an excerpt from a Gershwin tune called I've Got Rhythm. And I'm going to purposely open my mouth more than I ever would uh, normally when I sing. I got rhythm, I've got music, I got my man who could ask for anything more. I've got daisies in green pastures, I've got my man who can ask for anything more. Okay, first of all, I want to tell you how obnoxious that looks and sounds. It's really annoying. Could you imagine having to talk to someone all the time and they really open their mouth? They were really wide mouth talkers. It's like a Seinfeld episode, you know what I mean? Saying, oh, he's a wide talker. Instead of a close talker, a wide talker, always opening their mouth really wide to make sure that they're really being heard and that all the sound is coming out and then they want to articulate everything. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> too crazy. Now, I'm going to sing the excerpt again, and I'm going to sing it where I won't be opening my mouth as much. I got rhythm, I got music, now I got my man who can ask for anything more. I've got daisies in green pastures, now I got my man who can ask for anything more. Okay, so physically, singing it with a smaller mouth, it was a lot easier and I felt that the sound was way more consistent, it felt more leveled, and also I didn't look like someone who would drive you absolutely bonkers because they're opening the mouth too much! You can still have lots of articulation and detail, but you don't have to make it happen by opening your mouth and like trying to get all that sound. You can go back to the first example and hear how it sounded in the second example. I feel that when you're opening your mouth a lot, it gets kind of wild and crazy, but not in a good way. We really don't want to do that. Because could you imagine singing a four minute song with your mouth going constantly like this? Could you imagine having a conversation with someone who was like four minutes long? Four minutes would be torturously long if someone was talking to you like this all the time. Also, the person talking like this, it's exhausting. So to sum up today, you don't need to open your mouth that much. All you need to do is keep it small. Actually, an excellent little tip is try to sing a passage or try to sing a tune like you're a ventriloquist. I am not a professional ventriloquist, but I think of the concept of not moving my mouth that much and seeing what will happen. If you've ever seen a ventriloquist, they're amazing. They're not moving their mouths, but you can hear everything that they're saying. And that's possible because, hey man, they do it. Try to sing something, try to sing any passage that you want, like a ventriloquist, as much as you can. Like, we're not gonna close our mouths and try to talk like this so you can understand everything I'm saying. But we are gonna sing a passage 
where you're trying to keep it as small as possible. So let's do the I Got Rhythm again. I got rhythm, I got music, and I got my man who can ask for anything more. Now I got daisies in green pastures, I got my man who can ask for anything more. Okay, not bad. You know, once you get the hang of that, and once you know how you can make it all maneuver back there, that's where the sound is. It's not up here in front of your lips. It's here. The lips and the teeth and all that kind of stuff, those are for the fine details. But what you want to get to is the sound. And it's hard to get to the sound when your lips and everything else are going out of control. That's it for today. Subscribe. If you'd like to learn more, you can like or you can share. And we'll see you next time. Bye!